President Trump plans to rescind chip export controls and replace them with something new, while OpenAI is launching an AI for Countries program. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today we are getting a little bit geopolitical as OpenAI announces a new program for countries, and the Trump administration has announced a potentially big change to the way we're handling AI chip controls. Let's start there and work our way backwards. The TLDR is that Bloomberg is reporting that the administration is planning to repeal the so-called AI diffusion rule, which was, of course, a midnight rule from the outgoing Biden administration just one week before it's supposed to go into effect. The rule, you might remember, separated the world into three tiers with varying levels of export restrictions. One of the most notable parts of this was that the second tier countries were tightly limited in the number of advanced AI chips they could import, and this tier included most of the world, including allied nations like India, Israel, and South Korea. The stated logic was that placing broad export controls would stem the tide of advanced chips being passed into China via other countries. Now, one of the points that I've made is that the diffusion rule was kind of actually working towards cross-purposes. The diffusion word in the rule referred both to stemming the diffusion of AI chips to China, but also increasing the diffusion of American AI to other countries. But the way that they seem to be going about it sort of had those things at cross-purposes. In any case, it was very controversial from the moment it was introduced. NVIDIA and Oracle released open letters opposing the rule right away, with NVIDIA stating that it would, quote, put global progress in jeopardy. Another common complaint was that the rule was overly complex and difficult to enforce. The Trump team appears to have picked up a little from each of those arguments in their reasoning. In a statement, the Commerce Department said, The Biden AI rule is overly complex, overly bureaucratic, and would stymie American innovation. We will be replacing it with a much simpler rule that unleashes American innovation and ensures American AI dominance. They also said that they plan to continue to strictly enforce previous chip controls on China. And Bloomberg also reports that officials are planning on cracking down on countries like Malaysia and Thailand that are suspected of diverting chips into China. Ultimately, the policy shift seems to be more about the question of whether preventing exports to third countries with no history of smuggling is actually an effective way to curb the development of AI in China. NVIDIA, for their part, have been championing the view that export controls on allied nations is a wrong-headed way to go about the AI race. They held this view from the start, but ramped up their rhetoric significantly over recent weeks. CEO Jensen Huang was in Washington last week and pushed officials to recognize that China had caught up with the U.S., not because of chip smuggling, but because of dedicated scientific work. The big statement that resonated with the press that I mentioned numerous times last week was when Jensen said, China's not behind. China's right behind us. We're very close. This is a country with great will. They have great technical capacities. 50% of the world's AI researchers are Chinese. This is an industry that we'll have to compete for. Overall, the tenor of Huang's visit to Washington was that the U.S. needs to fundamentally rethink the way it's competing in AI to acknowledge recent Chinese breakthroughs. And while he was meeting with administration officials to try to change the diffusion rule, which is obviously in his company's interests, he appeared at least to be genuine in his concern that the U.S. was about to cut itself out of the AI race. He said, I'm not sure what the new diffusion rule is going to be, but whatever it turns out to be, it really has to recognize that the world has fundamentally changed since the previous diffusion rule was released. NVIDIA lauded the changes yesterday, releasing a statement which said, We welcome the administration's leadership and new direction on AI policy. With the AI diffusion rule revoked, America will have a once-in-a-generation opportunity to lead the next industrial revolution and create high-paying U.S. jobs, build new U.S.-supplied infrastructure, and alleviate the trade deficit. And one key point here was the idea of U.S.-supplied infrastructure. When the outgoing Biden administration established the diffusion rule, there was an explicit assumption that the U.S. would be the monopoly supplier of advanced AI chips. Tier 2 nations could import sufficient chips to build large-scale data centers, but only with approval from the Commerce Department. The same approach was applied to the most advanced AI models, which potentially limited global developments via cloud services. Of course, what blew up these assumptions was the release of DeepSeek R1. Before that, the belief was widespread that Chinese chip foundries were still several years behind NVIDIA's current products, but that appears pretty clearly to be no longer the case. Chinese open source models from DeepSeek and Alibaba's Quen team are catching up quickly to the state of the art. And more to the point, they're now at a place where they represent a viable alternative to models like OpenAI's GPT-40. These models are easily good enough to power basic AI functionality across the global south, and China has expressed a desire to export them far and wide. Chips are a similar story. Even if Huawei isn't on par with NVIDIA and doesn't have production ramped up, it's only a matter of time and it's now more likely to be measured in months rather than years. What we don't know at this stage is what the replacement for the diffusion rule will look like. There's been discussion of the administration folding chip policy into their broader trade negotiations, using access as a bargaining chip. One region of particular interest is the Middle East. 
States like Saudi Arabia and the UAE have been racing to develop advanced AI capabilities but were stymied by the Biden administration. There were concerns that chips destined for the Middle East would be passed on to China. On Wednesday, when queried about loosening restrictions on the Gulf states, Trump responded, We might be doing that. Yeah, it will be announced soon. Now, Trump himself is currently preparing for his first major diplomatic trip, which includes a three-country Middle East leg beginning in Saudi Arabia. The Gulf states, of course, sit between China and the U.S. both geographically and diplomatically. And if Trump strikes a deal, we could be about to witness the first example of chip diplomacy in the AI era. Now, the other big question is how the U.S. will flood the world with its AI to get in ahead of China. Right again, there was these two parts of the diffusion rule. One was preventing diffusion of AI chips to China, but the other was diffusing American AI technology to friendly countries around the world. Well, to that end, OpenAI just announced a new initiative called AI for Countries. The company wrote that following the announcement of their Stargate project, quote, we've heard from many countries asking for help in building out similar AI infrastructure, that they want their own Stargates and similar projects. It's clear to everyone now that this kind of infrastructure is going to be the backbone of future economic growth and national development. Under the initiative, OpenAI will partner with governments to build out data centers in a series of co-funded projects. They said that the goal is to pursue 10 international projects to start with, but they didn't say anything about where they'll be located. At the same time, the announcement blog post did carry extremely heavy overtones that this initiative is squarely aimed at outcompeting Chinese AI deployment. OpenAI wrote, We want to help these countries and in the process spread democratic AI, which means the development, use, and deployment of AI that protects and incorporates longstanding democratic principles. We believe that partnering closely with the U.S. government is the best way to advance democratic AI. So there are lots of interesting elements of this story. How much of this is just NVIDIA putting its thumb on the scale of the U.S. administration and having them respond? How much of this is about larger trade negotiations? Whatever the answer, AI's place in geopolitics continues to do nothing but increase. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching, as always. And until next time, peace.